probably have almonds in my teeth. Hello everybody, it's Delilah and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Delilah. I make motherhood and lifestyle videos. Today we're gonna to be talking about natural family planning. Over the past year or so, I've been asked about this topic multiple times and I thought, why not just come on here? talk about our experience, talk about what exactly it is that we do to prevent and to plan for pregnancy naturally. I know for a lot of people, this is something that they've never heard before. Uh, for some people, they just wanna know more about it. So if you have questions, I'm hoping I can answer all of those questions in today's video. I just wanna start off by saying that this is in no way me telling you what to do. It is your choice ultimately what you choose to do to prevent or to prepare for pregnancy. Um, this is simply our experience and what we have done. I'll explain the whole reason why and what we do in this video. And also I am in no way a professional at all. I'm in no position to be giving medical advice. If you are interested in this, maybe talk to your family doctor to learn more about it from the medical point of view. Um, do a lot of research on this if this is something that you personally want to do. Today I'm just going to be talking about my experience and yeah, let's do this. So I think first of all I'm going to explain my story, my experience of how I got to where I am now and why we have chosen natural family planning for ourselves. So way back in high school, I had some period issues. My period started off pretty regular, pretty normal, and then out of the blue for one entire year straight, I bled every day, every day. I would kind of spot every day until my period would come and when my period came, oh my goodness, it was insane it was extremely heavy i remember putting a tampon in and a pad like a full thick pad on before i left for school in the morning and by the time i got to school which was literally 10 to 15 minutes away i had soaked through everything it was brutal so i went to see my doctor and she decided to put me on birth control now this is something i was very hesitant to do because i had heard of all the negative side effects of hormonal birth control, AKA the pill, and I really did not want to do it, but I was also desperate, so I agreed. I went on the pill and it changed everything for the better. It made my periods super regular. It made my periods less painful, like way less painful. I bled way less and it was just I don't know, it just, it fixed everything. So I stayed on birth control for a year. During that time, Zach and I were dating, but we never, you know, were intimate before getting married. We, from, a, we are Christians and we believe in abstinence before marriage. And so we saved ourselves for marriage and it was really just a, an incredibly beautiful thing. I never had any negative side effects. I was really concerned about like weight gain and like, acne and headaches and like there's so many different side effects that could happen because I mean it's playing with your hormones and hormones can do crazy things to your body but after a year I had had no negative side effects whatsoever it was honestly the best thing it was the best thing I had an incredible experience with birth control um, but after a year I wanted to see what my body would do so I went off of it and I was very pleasantly surprised to notice that my period was super regular without any hormones. It just did its thing, my body knew what to do, it was fixed. Whatever issue I was experiencing was fixed. Now fast forward a year, Zach and I get engaged and uh, as an uneducated teenager yes i was 18 when we got engaged i i figured i had a fantastic experience on the pill previously why not just go back on it again in my in my mind it was either birth control or condoms and birth control seemed like the safest and birth control seemed like the safest option so i went back on birth control and again i didn't have any bad experiences it was honestly like it was great fast forward another year zach and i move into our first home and we decide we want to start trying for a baby so i went off of the pill and the following month we were pregnant so because i had such a fantastic experience with birth control before i figured why not just go back on the pill after eloise was born so once she was born i think it was my six week checkup you know your doctor does the whole 
check up on you, the postpartum checkup, make sure everything is good to go. And she asked about birth control and if I wanted to be, pres be prescribed for birth control again, and I said yes. And then she mentioned that it could affect my milk supply. And I had no idea about this. I was completely clueless. Um, so I got the birth control, but I never actually took it again because I was scared that my milk supply would be ruined and that I wouldn't be able to breastfeed my baby. And so I decided that's it. We're gonna try natural family planning instead. And I'm very glad I chose to do that. And I probably will never go back on the pill again. I, at this point, it's been so long since I've been on birth control that I am a little bit scared to know what it would do to my hormones and to my body. Natural family planning has worked for us really well and we're going to just continue doing it until we decide that we're not having kids anymore. And I got some questions about what we're gonna do once we decide we're not gonna have kids anymore and we don't know yet. I mean, we're not at that point yet. We haven't really thought about it that much, but as, as of right now, we are doing natural family planning. It's going great. So what exactly is natural family planning? Natural family planning is basically just being very aware of your cycle and knowing when you're ovulating, when your fertile window is, and either abstaining from sex during that time or being very careful and protected during that time and then the rest of the time it's okay. It's a lot of understanding your cycle, tracking your cycle, understanding your body and knowing how to check for your ovulation and your fertile window. A woman can only get pregnant um, approximately six days of her, of her cycle. So if you know approximately when those six days are, you can very easily prevent pregnancy. Now I will say, it, if you have a very irregular cycle, this might be a really hard thing to do. Again, I can't speak from a medical level, but I know since being on birth control and since having children, my periods have been very regular and I've gotten very in tune with my body and I know very well when I'm ovulating and when I'm not. Knowing that makes it very easy for me to be able to do natural family planning. So understanding my body and my cycle. It kind of started about two months after Eloise was born is when I got my period back the first time. Once hormones started regulating and my period started becoming regular again, I started noticing symptoms that my body had at different times of the month. And I started taking note of these symptoms and understanding that when I would experience certain symptoms, I might actually be ovulating. I kind of use those symptoms as a guide as to when it was safe and when it was not safe. But I mostly looked at the calendar. For the most part, it was pretty accurate, but we were also a lot more on the cautious and safe side. And then after Theo was born, that's when I really started to notice these symptoms. Everything started to become like very obvious. I think with each child I've had, the symptoms have just become like more obvious and I guess worse, it's not necessarily a bad thing because I'm aware at least of when I'm ovulating or about to ovulate so I can be prepared. For me, symptoms include increased cervical mucus, like an extreme amount of increased cervical mucus. Um, it also changes in consistency. I know this might be like so gross for some people to listen to, but this is how I am able to tell. If you research it, you'll probably find out that uh, cervical mucus will become more more like egg whites, if that makes sense. More like less, it has more elasticity. I hope I'm saying it right. <laughs> Anyways, I mostly just noticed that there's a lot more cervical mucus. And very often I'll actually have period cramps, period cramps, but they're actually ovulation cramps um, during that time or on that day or the day before that I'm having my period. I'll notice like an ache on either side um, like either one of my ovaries and I'll know, okay, I'm ovulating right now. It, it really sometimes feels like I'm getting my period, but I'm actually ovulating. So I was really curious about these symptoms and I just, I wanted to be more aware and understand better what exactly my body was telling me when I was experiencing these symptoms. So I went on Amazon and I bought some ovulation test strips and they're really cheap on Amazon. This is what they look like. Comes in a box of what, 50? 50 tests. I also have this brand of pregnancy tests and they have worked just fantastic. I bought these and then I downloaded the app that corresponds to this and it is called 
pre-mom. This is what the app looks like. So there's different options, different settings you can go to. Basically all you do is you punch in like the first day of your last period and then approximately how many days apart your periods are or how long your cycle is. And then it kind of does everything approximately for you and then you start tracking and making notes and it's, it's been really nice to be able to actually see it all on a calendar. We're gonna get really close and personal. This is my current state. The dark pink is when my period would be and the purple is my fertile, fertile? Fertile window. For, is it fertile? No, it's fertile. Yeah, fertile window. And then all the dates with nothing on it are days where it's probably safe to have unprotected sex. And then if you go over to the charts, it'll kind of show you the same thing, but in a different pattern. So again, the red is your period. The purple is your fertile window. This is actually, oh, look at that. It's actually ovulation day for me approximately ovulation day. I'm not actually keeping track anymore because I kind of, now that I've done it, I can tell approximately when my fertile window is. It's not to the day every single month, but for me, I guess it's either ovulation day yesterday, today, or tomorrow. But let's go back a few months. What I did, starting at the last day of my period, I started taking tests every morning when I woke up and when you take a test, let me open one of these so I can show you really quick. The test looks a lot like a pregnancy test. Now, every time you take one, there will be two lines on it. Don't worry, this is not like a pregnancy test. This is different. Two lines is what it's supposed to be. Now, one line is going to be the same every time and the other line is either going to be really light or really dark, depending on when you're ovulating. If it's really light, it means you're not ovulating. If it's really dark, it means you are. Now what this does is it tests your LH levels um, and your LH level spikes the day before you ovulate. I'll show you. So after you take the test, you let it sit for a few minutes and then you take a picture of it in this app. It'll tell you what your level is and then you can kind of see all of them side by side. So this was the first one. And as you can see, this, this dark purple one here is when my LH level peaked. Um, so that was a really, really dark line. The next day was actually ovulation day. It's kind of weird, it peaks and then you have ovulation. So the few days leading up to and a few days after is your fertile window. Then I did the same thing the next month to try and understand like how exactly everything was working. So I think in the first month I ovulated eight days after the last day of my period. The next month I ovulated nine days after the last day of my period. So I know for myself, I ovulate approximately one to one and a half weeks after the last day of my period. So during this time that I was taking these tests, I was also taking note of my cervical mucus and like at what stages it was increasing. And I noticed even a few days before I ovulated is when my cervical mucus started to increase. And then on the day or the day before ovulation is when I would get cramping. Um, so it's kind of nice. I know as soon as my cervical mucus starts increasing, then we need to be very careful. So now that I've tracked that for a couple of months, I, I have a really good understanding of what my body is telling me. Um, and I don't actually track it anymore. I just, every month I plug in the first day of my period because it's not always the exact same day. It's usually very close, like either the day of or the day after my period is predicted to come, it comes. And then every time I plug it in, all these little dots will um, appear where they're supposed to appear. And I have a good understanding of when I will be ovulating and when I won't be ovulating according to a calendar. Now, another way I can actually check to see if I'm ovulating is by checking my cervix. And this is something I've never been told how to do. Um, but after being pregnant twice, I have become familiar, <laughs> more familiar with my body. And I am able to check my cervix and know when I'm ovulating. Now, if you wanna know more about that specifically, you can research it, look it up. And I know when it comes to natural family planning, there's like various ways of doing it and they all have certain names. I kind of just do a variety of everything um, and it gives me a better, a 
better accuracy. Now cautions, I want to warn you, natural family planning is not 100% accurate, nor is any type of birth control. With any birth control, there's always the risk of getting pregnant. There's always people who have gotten pregnant when trying not to get pregnant. It's always a possibility, uh, but for us so far, it has worked really well. Also, during big hormonal changes in your life, uh, you will need to be very, very, very extra cautious. Um, times like postpartum, right after having a baby, before your period even comes, you need to be on a high caution alert. <laughs> Unless you want to get pregnant again, I mean, then by all means, go for it. Even once you get your period back postpartum, it's going to take a few months for it to regulate, so still be on high caution. Start taking notes what your body is doing, what your body is telling you, maybe even start tracking it. And by the way, these strips are not the only way that you can actually track your ovulation. There's also, what is it? I forget what it's called, some kind of a like thermometer thing where you can check your temperature. Um, because when you check your temperature in the morning, when you're ovulating, your temperature rises. Now, I don't know how accurate this is. I've never actually tried it or done it, but it's something else to look into. After having a miscarriage, hormones are gonna be crazy. Um, while breastfeeding, your, like the entire time you're breastfeeding, your hormones could be wacky, even while weaning. Even like one year postpartum, your body kind of goes through a phase where it's like trying to deal with these hormones. You just, just be aware of these certain stages and times in your life so that you can be extra careful and extra cautious. Also, sperm can live in a female body for up to five days. But once an egg has been released, it lives for a maximum of 12 to 24 hours before disintegrating. This is why your fertile window is about six days because if the sperm can live in the female body for five days and then you release an egg and then it could last and be active and live for 24 hours, that is a six day window that you need to be careful if you are trying to prevent pregnancy. Now, how do we use natural family planning to prevent pregnancy and try to conceive? Um, for preventing pregnancy, honestly, this is all kind of new to me. I've only gotten to like the, the more technical side of it and being more aware of my body and my cycle and tracking things in the last year or so. But to prevent pregnancy, I try to be very on top of things and make sure to be like checking where my cervical mucus is at and checking my calendar and checking my app and just making sure when my fertile window is approximately um, and giving myself an extra like day or two wiggle room just to be extra extra sure. Um, Zach and I are extremely blessed. We've been very fertile from our experiences and so we just are very very careful when we're trying to prevent. Now when I'm in my fertile window, we choose not to abstain. We waited three years before having sex. We don't want to abstain anymore. <laughs> that was long enough. So if I'm in my fertile window, we will use condoms to prevent pregnancy. That is the method that we use during that time. There's other things you can do. You can do some research if you want to. And if we are ever remotely unsure, we, we use a condom. Especially during times of great hormonal changes, we make sure to use a lot of caution, especially freshly postpartum because you just never know when your period is gonna come. And by the time your period comes, I mean, it could be too late. You could already be pregnant again and you lose you lose that chance. So we're very, very careful until my period comes and then I'm able to start tracking it and understand it again. Now to use natural family planning to try to conceive, honestly, that's something we've never ever done. We've never kept track of it. I've, we've just, we just stopped using any form of protection. I wasn't totally aware of all this like tracking stuff the last two times that we got, I guess technically three times that we got pregnant. So we just kind of went with the flow and whatever happened, happened. I actually have to keep a lot closer eye on my cycle when trying to prevent pregnancy than when we are trying to conceive. And I feel very blessed to be able to say that. Now I also got some questions about what if we became pregnant when we did not want to become pregnant? What if natural family planning didn't work and we did become pregnant? Now I, myself, I'm a Christian and I believe 
100% fully in pro-life. I know everyone has a very different opinion on that and you are completely entitled to your opinion. But for myself and my husband, we are very strong believers in pro-life. So if we were to become pregnant, when we didn't plan to become pregnant, it's, I'll be honest, it would be hard to accept, but we would keep the baby. Absolutely, 100%, no doubt about it, no question. And I think that kind of covers everything that I wanted to talk about. If you're looking into it, I highly suggest you do some research into it, ask your doctor about it. I think it's a really, really great alternative. It helps you become really, in tune with your body and aware of what your body is doing and it really just i don't know it really helped me appreciate my body and everything that god has designed my body to do it's just so cool what my body is capable of and how i'm able to even just know when i'm ovulating and when i'm not at I just think it's really cool. Anyway, thank you so much for watching today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.